What is going on, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes are back with another MMA superstar. Now we get to talk to Adrian uh, Yanez, a bantamweight in the UFC, who is now 5-0 and in UFC proper. Got the Contender Series thing going on, nine in a row. Four of those have been finishes in the UFC. Very, very impressive. His last victim is Tony Kelly at UFC on ESPN 37 this past weekend in Austin, Texas. You brought the house down, Adrian. Great, great performance all around. Man, thank you so much, man. It was absolutely fun. It was an absolute blessing, man. It, it was a dream, man. That that was a moment that I'm never, ever going to forget, man, That because that was like my first time fighting in the UFC in front of fans and in my home state. That Everything just fell into place, and I love it. It's going to be hard to go to the Apex now, right? Yeah, it is going to be hard, but, you know, I would go back if they want to main event me in the Apex. So I think that would be pretty dope. But, you know, I do love I do love the fans. I do love the fans that 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 was just an unreal reaction. I haven't I, I had that experience was just something crazy for me. I was like, holy shit, like I need this again. See, that's just it. I felt like you graduated to an arena star. I'm not going to go so far as to say superstar we're getting there <laughs> right but you're an arena star that thrives off the crowd and the crowd connects so i thought i'll give you nine and a half out of ten that last little point half point that i may subtract is because somewhere in there i know you're a company man and you recoil and, and you want to you know flow go with the flow <laughs> sometimes that hey whatever they want sean and mick no no yeah. no don't say that it's what you want <laughs> you're calling the shots you just blasted somebody and everyone's sitting there foaming at the mouth pouring beers on each other because <laughs> that's what they go for is for that type of carnage and you provided it so don't be a nice guy at that no, point yeah. tell us what you want who you want <laughs> where you want when you want it if it's if it's bare knuckle, if it's in an alley with bats, whatever it is, we are in. You got that, young man? Oh yeah, I got that, man. I love it, man. A hundred percent. Yeah. No, and I felt I felt like right after, man. I I got I got right after that small little thing. I was like, man, because I have a hit list, man. I have the hit list, man. People have been calling me out. I got three people who called me out, so I was like, I knocked one off the list. So I got two left. I got Nate Manis and uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley, but they both got fights booked, so uh, that kind of threw a wrench in my plans. So you know, it is what it is. Yeah, but those fights are coming up soon. You know, it's not like your fight is. You, this is the NFL. You don't have something scheduled for this Sunday, right? Oh, so yeah. you have a little bit of time to decompress, mess around with Little Man a little bit more. Congratulations, obviously. Um, and you know, soak up this victory. Keep fine tuning your game, O'Malley. You know he, he'll he's got a fight coming up, and if he gets through it, boy, a lot of people want to see that collision course. And if you have someone else on your hit list, great, you know. But like I say, I can tell that connection, man. Um, and and Dana watches that stuff. Dana watches that stuff. So trust me, he when he watches this, he's gonna probably go shit. Those guys from Junkie are doing me a favor. He wants those stars. He wants that magnetic connection between fans and fighter. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I, I agree with that. I agree with that too. You know, so uh, for me, I got I felt like just that night, that whole night was just like filled up with like me just getting all the love in the world from Texas. So you know, I definitely know Dana White knows that I'm loved in Texas. So he would one hundred percent would want to bring me back to to Dallas, Houston, El Paso, San Antonio, back to back to Austin again. You know, so yeah, man, they know I'm a draw. I'm a draw in Texas. Hell yeah. And then even at the post fight where I liked it was you kind of made up for it a little bit when they asked you about the best hands in the division. It seemed like you were like, OK, you know, because the Bantamweights, man, I, I imagine all of you respect each other and, and it's a fraternity. You know, I remember Aljamain Sterling said some nice things about your hands, you know, but I liked it when you said, you know what? Fuck it. This is the guy. I got the nicest <laughs> hands or whatever. So I really love that moment, um, you know, but. Man, I'm telling, I'm telling you, you ticked so many boxes. It was an outstanding performance, and and it just needs to be said over and over how much you popped on Saturday night and the steps that you took. You're also going to be uh, uh, making a, another splash into our USA Today Sports Anime Junkie rankings. I wanted that to reveal that personally to you as well. Oh shit! Nice. I love it, man. Hell yeah, man. Oh yeah, dude. I fucking love this shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey how, how's the paypal is how's the paypal any money coming in from brazil 
Oh man, uh, no. Uh, Gilbert Burns sent me some cash, and that was amazing. Yeah, he he held up on his end. I tried not to accept it at first, but you know, he went on Twitter was like, "Hey guys, Giannis isn't accepting it. Uh, get get him, uh, get him to accept it." And then next, you know, I just, my phone just started blowing up, and I was like, "All right, Gilbert, here's my banking information." <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah, he sent me some money." I was like, "Damn." All right, cool. Is that, was, is, that, was is that a private cool. number or can you share? I, I'm keeping that private, man. If he wants to, if he wants to share it, he can share it. But I'm not, I'm not releasing that information. Three, three zeros. That's definitely three zeros. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert Burns comes strong. Wow, this meant yeah. a lot to him too. Yeah, All right. yeah, it meant, it meant an absolute lot to him. Yeah, I'll, I'll get. I'll, yeah, that's it. Yeah. I'm he not left, giving yeah, no, no clues. That's cool. No clues. No more clues. That's, that's cool. It. He left it at that, <laughs> folks. So that means it could even be more. Who knows? But that 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 right then and in, in, in itself is is uh fun, fun stuff. You know, it a lot of people kind of talk a big game and and you know, some pull back or whatever. But wow, Gilbert Burns, it really meant a lot to him. He came through. I remember Chris Cyborg at the same time. She, you know, she was a little hurt by it and everything. And and hopefully Tony can um get past this you know and oh, he's he's, he, doubling, he, he's he, doubling down man he's doubling down man has he yeah man i've see, I seen uh seen a whole bunch of people been like sharing sharing uh twitter pictures with me and just being like showing some of his comments the saying you know it's like it's not not the not the best thing you can probably be saying he's like yeah. saying yeah no nah, i was like i'm not i'm not gonna repeat it that a lot of these people can go on twitter and start looking at the the responses that he's been putting on uh on instagram comments and yeah yeah, yeah you know so like uh yeah, no, I uh, don't like that and guy see, at all. I, I thought when it was over, it looked like he shook your hand and like it was, you know, putting that to rest. But I, I guess that's not it. So yeah, no, he's um, he's he's steadily talking. He's steadily talking shit on uh, on Instagram on stories. I'm just responding to him. That's pretty much it. He's initiating this. I'm just responding. So I'm not trying to go out my way to be shitty person, but I'm, he's making it super easy for me to do that. So, uh, yeah, so. Psh- yeah, he's he's I don't know, man. You know, I hope he's in a good mental place. You know that that that, you know, he's probably still a little delusional. You know, so you know it is what it is, man. I don't want to kick him while he's down, but dude's just making it so easy, man, because he's just talking a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this now. Um, so we're talking about Sean O'Malley, and then there's other fighters, you know, ranked above him. But do you feel like you're at championship level yet, or can you recognize there's still maybe a level or two more that you need to reach? Before you start slanging and banging like Derek Lewis, fellow Texans like to, fellow Texan likes to say with yeah. Aljo, Jan, and the rest. Oh no, hundred percent. Like I, I feel like there's there's another level to be reached, and I want to reach that level because I want to make sure whenever I get that spot, like I take that and I run with it, and I just keep running until the to the wheels fall off, man. Because I want to make sure that I'm ready, and I don't want to I don't want to jump jump too far ahead of my. Uh, jump jump in the deep end whenever i'm barely learning how to swim so like i'm i'm good like i'm good but at the same time i there's a lot of learning i need to do you know so uh you know i'm already the best with boxing already best hands in the division i'm one for one on that uh you know now just start to make make uh less mistakes because i still am making rookie mistakes and i like i watched that fight i watched even with that fight with tony Khan, i'm making a rookie mistake and i'm just like i i look at it i'm just like man I gotta, I gotta, I gotta work on this shit. Like I gotta work. Um. Also, this is a part of me being a little bit too like, man, fuck. Like, uh, I'm, I'm striving for perfection. I know I'm never gonna reach it, but I'm always striving for perfection. So it's also kind of like me just like looking at it and be like, nah. Like, I there's there's more work I need to be doing. So, uh, I got the coaches in front of me that I got the right coaches in front of me that's gonna help me help me uh help me get there. And whenever I get there, man, I want to take it. I want to run with it. I want to make sure I get so many title defenses and all that stuff so uh uh make sure i set myself up my family up and everything else up so man yeah no when i get there i'm telling you i'm gonna get there and i'm i'm gonna step on the scene i want to break records what about the actual progression of how your career has gone do you feel like that has gone 100 percent? like if we were to go back to your first fight would you be happy if we told you this is where you're at and this is how many fights you've had I honestly would be like, holy shit, I got there that like I, I feel like it just it just happened. Like I feel like it was going faster than what 
than what I expected it to be. Like, if I'm being 100% honest with you, uh, I had to take a step back and look look at myself and be like, damn, I really am that guy right now. So, yeah, like, it's still crazy to me, right, even at this moment. But if you were to tell me whenever I made my debut that I was going to be this guy, then uh, I would have been like, oh, dude, you're, you're a little bit nuts. You're a little bit crazy. But, you know, all the hard work, all, all the sacrifices that I made, you know, and, you know, look at me now, like I'm here, you know. So it's, it's pretty cool to, like, kind of sit back and reflect on it. Uh, but man, there's a lot more work to be done and, uh, I'm never going to be able to stop, never going to stop working. Cause man, I'm not going to get complacent. I like the number 15 next to my name, but man, you know, it looks really nice to see. Adrian, I talked about this on another segment regarding you. I feel like every time we talk to you, there's some kind of weight on your shoulders going into a fight and you know, it's not all bad, but things have happened, right? Um, you know, you, you just became a father, you, you lost your coach, Salsa Lee's. This feels like Texas is just all up on your shoulders, <laughs> even Brazil, right? But it seems like you're very good at reacting to this adversity. It almost fuels you. Can you talk a little bit about that feeling when you're in the cage and what it is you feel? Man, I honestly it just like I say, I, I, man, I was actually just talking to somebody uh, like a week before fight week, and they were asking me, man, like, like how do you deal with all that pressure? Like it was just like a casual conversation. They were just asking me, like how do I do a fight? And like, isn't it so crazy? And I was like, you know what, you know what it is about being in that cage that like, that I absolutely love is every time I step in into that cage, nothing else matters right now. Nothing else within those, within that amount of time that I'm in there, nothing else matters other than the fight, other than the problem itself. And that person's in front of you, trying to take your head off, trying to put you to sleep, trying to break a limb, trying to do something, trying to detach like your, your shoulder off, man, trying to take an arm home, trying to do something, trying to knock your head off, man. So yeah, I had to deal with that problem in front of me. Nothing else. And then like the state of Texas is not there. You know, I have Tony, I had Tony Kelly in front of me wanting to put me to sleep, wanting to cause harm to me. So every other problem whatever whatever bs or just anything in general that was there is now gone because i have to worry about this problem because if i start thinking about that problem i'll start thinking about problems uh outside the cage while i'm in the cage i'm getting fucked up so <laughs> man i had i had to sit down i had to dial in i had to focus because at the end of the day whenever i'm in there and i'm just thinking about the person in front and like the problems that i had to assess at that moment I feel free, man. Like there's no other problem that matters to me. And right after I'm done, it's just like, whoo, yeah, man, shit. Like no, nothing else really matters right now, man. I just get to go see my family, get to chill, do all that. And then, you know, it is what it is after that. But man, I love it, man. It's just, it's such a cool feeling because man, it's like, uh, like, man, <laughs> it's just such a cool feeling. George broke the news to you about you entering our rankings there on MMA Junkie. So I'm going to break to you. You've also entered my rankings on Wordle. As far as fighting <laughs> go, I know you're one of the top guys at Wordle. It seems like every day you're getting it. Um, what's your go-to word? How do you start your, your thing off? <laughs> I got like two or three go-to words. My first go-to word was train. Uh, my first go-to word was train. And then after that, I've been using a word like great. And uh, I think this past one... Uh, man, I think it was group I used. So yeah, like it, it just depends. Like I, I, man, I, I try to stick with those three at least. Uh, so, you know, I could try to at least hit all my, hit all my vowels like immediately. So <laughs> if I knock everything out, like, I, man, I'm strategic with this, man. I'm like, no. Okay. So now I know it doesn't have an E, A, R and all that stuff immediately. And I'm like, all right, cool. It, it narrows everything down for me. I have a strategy the way I go to it. And man, whenever I'm on the sixth try, I'm just like, I get the finally get the word. I'm like, I'm an idiot. That sh I should have known that that was the word. <laughs> but yeah, uh, man, I, I I love Wordle just because it's just like another thing, like another thing I can get competitive at. And you know, I'm the best Wordle player in the UFC, and no one can no one can uh, top me at that right now. So yeah, you know, I think Israel Adesanya was playing it for a little bit, but he stopped playing. But I've been more consistent, so you know, I am I am the Wordle champ here. <laughs> I like it. Wow, we're making Wordle interesting. Did you do today's yet? Or oh no, not yet, not yet, man. As soon as I got up, I was like, man, what am I gonna be doing today? I got my son ready, took him. Then uh, after that, I went to go get. I actually, first time in a while, I got my car cleaned. So I was like, yeah, got home. Uh, 
You cleaned up all them Dr. Peppers yeah. and Jack in the yeah. Box and all that? Oh, yeah, bro. Like, I got my, my Dr. Pepper Dark Berry right now. So I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, trust me. I'm living life, life right now. And World is probably going to be done sometime within the next hour or two. So, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for it. You know, I'm playing. I'm I'm playing a friend of mine. We're calling it golf. If you get it in one, it's a hole in one. If you get it in two, it's an eagle. If you get it in three, it's a birdie. <laughs> if you get it in four, it's par. If you get it in five, it's a bogey. If you get it in six, it's a double bogey. And then if you don't get it, it's a triple bogey. So I don't know if those golf terms make sense to you. Um, he's beating me. But, uh, man, prior to us adapting this format, I used to hang tough with him. I used to think I was pretty good, but man, I, I don't think I want any part of Adrian Yanez. Uh, do you get it? Have you ever gotten it in two? I uh, two, yeah, I get it in two. Uh, man, uh, I got. I it's like uh, I think I saw in the stats. I get. It's like at a. Uh, I'm at a uh, like eighteen percent on two, so I get it. I get it, but not as much as I want to. I think on three and four, on three yeah. and four, I'm like at closer to like the forty percent. The forty percent. So damn, check yeah. you out. All right. Yeah. So I'm 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 up, I'm up there, man. Like I I have a really good way of just like narrowing it down, and then uh, the ones that throw me for a loop are the double letters, man. Like if they have like if the if the wordle day is loose, like I'm just like I'm just losing my mind because I'm like it double letters will throw me off, you know. So uh, that's the part that that will like it is it is a little difficult at times when they have double letters. You got in a hole in one. Uh man, not yet. Okay, so oh, I fucked up. Me one. neither. I've gotten I two, used, and I've been pretty happy. So my but, go-to uh, word, my go-to word was train, and that day I happened to go with another go-to word, and I used great. And then the the my third go around, I was like, is it really this? And I put train. And I was like, that my my first go-to word, and I didn't use it. I could have got a hole in one, and I was so upset with myself. I was like, this is this is this is bullshit. I know, man. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'll ever get one. See, that's the thing. If you use a word, a key word, you probably eliminate yourself from ever getting a hole in one. Um, but if you try different ones, um, then you have a better shot at it, but then you put yourself in a terrible position to start doing the elimination process. I'll, I'll clue you guys in here before people start getting pissed off at us because we're not talking about <laughs> MMA and, and knockouts. Um, I saw something on YouTube, and it was some chick who was like a savant, like super smart. And I remember she was like filing her nails or doing something as she explained Wordle. So you could just tell she was a genius, right? But guess what she came up with, guys? If you're going to start off with, it's T-H-U-R-L, Thurl. There used to be a basketball player named Thurl Bailey. But prior to that, I've never heard the word Thurl. But I guess it is a word. And she says that uh, word is your best starting word. She explained it. I'm sure if you Google YouTube, Wordle, Thurl, maybe this chick will pop up. And I can't remember if she was filing her name. Her nails, doing her taxes, planting. I don't know, but she was busy doing something as she explained it. But um, I've tried Thurl a few times. But like I say, unless you'll never get the hole in one if you always put Thurl, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, no, I get it, man. I uh, There was one uh, like a couple days ago, like a couple days ago that like threw me for a loop. And I cacao? Was just, was it cacao no, or whatever? No, it wasn't cacao. I actually got that one. I, got I that hated one, like, that one. Four. I never heard of no cacao. That sounded oh, yeah. like something like... Like a you know hot chocolate in Brazil or something like that. What, yeah, what the hell's so, cacao? So, yeah, no, they 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 used primo. Yes, they used primo, and I'm like, I I correlate that in Spanish. I'm like, I never heard that in English. So I'm just like, what? Like I started losing my shit. I was like, oh, so now we're throwing Spanish words in this? Thing? Like, what, what what's going on here, guys? Like, I think bro. people say like, ooh, that is primo, as in it's good or something like that. Ah, okay. Well, you know, I'm gonna have to quality, look that word I guess. Up, man. You know, I'm gonna have to look that up because I I call I called bullshit. <laughs> Thank you, New York Times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, hey, let's talk about another interesting thing. It looked like you have linked up with Eve Edwards. I saw you. I heard you drop his name. He's a good friend of our show. We've known him for a while. Um, man, a quality person and one hell of a fighter. You know, at one point, arguably, even though there's not a UFC belt, uh, you know, to his name, but at, at one point when that division was in its infancy stages, and it, you know, they they really hadn't really gone that route because I don't know if you know the history of it. They they tried to get a champ. 
they well they had one and then they it kind of went away and then they tried again and it went away again and then they finally started with Sean Shirk um but Eve Edwards at one point was was the number one lightweight in the world man oh yeah man yeah working with working with Eve is man is the guy is just like man he's he's super precise in what he says and super and what he wants just to, just in like the technician part in general man like he's he's a mastermind he's like he's he knows a lot he's very knowledgeable man and i i man i commend this i commend him a lot cuz he was man again he worked with my coach back in the day so uh it it was so easy for me to work with him because man that just the familiar familiarity and all that stuff right. so that was yeah that made it so much easier for like man i instead of going with somebody else who you know i i looked back and had to work with him a couple of days and be like man i don't think this guy really knows his shit uh but at least with eve edwards i knew he knew his shit and then also at the same time we had the same lineage and like training. So it was just like, Oh, okay. Like I, he knows, uh, he knows that if he were to ask me to do something, I can do it. So he's like, it's, it's super easy. It was just kind of like almost like a two puzzle pieces fitting together. And that was a perfect fit. What was the after party? Like if you had one or just your group of friends, you know, everybody that came to your fight, what, what was that setting like afterwards, man? must've been pretty special. It was pretty special. Like uh, we went to, I went to the hotel room and uh, got got with my family. Uh, got with my family was able to be, be there with them for a little bit before I had to go to a, an after party at Little Woodrow's, and that was almost like a, like work for me as well too, because uh, I was meeting nothing but fans. Like fans want to take pictures, and I was just man again. Like I love taking pictures with fans. Like it's it's so cool. Like just to see that people like are like. Uh, watching me fight and they're like so excited down there like i think that's super cool as well because i used to be that guy too so uh yeah no that that that's that was super cool for me so uh on on that end you know like that was that was work uh, i did get a little bit like uh you know a little bit crazy towards the end uh you know not uh not 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 the good type of crazy but you know uh yeah i, I mean I, i'm probably just gonna leave it at that uh, 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 uh. But you, you, you piqued our interest. Well, what happened? Did the street uh, nah, break out? Uh, oh no, it was just uh just uh just uh an older guy just starts uh talking shit towards the end of the night, you know. To he you? Got kicked. Yeah, he started why like, would he do that? He was already kicked out. He was already kicked out. He was name dropping, trying to say he was with me and all that stuff, but uh uh they kicked him out, and you're all, all you hear through the uh through the fences like fuck you yanez and i'm just like whatever bro <laughs> whatever wow. yeah, somebody was bro. trying to rain on your parade huh yeah man he, he, yeah not not a good look my friend not a good look yeah i mean that was your night you know that that's just not the night to do it but um yeah. you, you didn't know him huh oh no i know him <laughs> oh you know, know him. him oh okay i know him yeah that's so that's that's like i'm i'm gonna leave it at that because that sound was dead <laughs> Yeah. Got it. Got it. All right. Cool. <laughs> Sorry we push you, man. That stuff intrigues us. Oh. See, when we used to have our studio at Mandalay Bay, when the fighters were coming through, we would always ask them to share a good street fight story. We haven't done that since 2020 because we had yeah. to clear the studio out in, uh, in, in 2020. We haven't been really back on a consistent basis to hear these stories. And, uh, and, and something tells me, man, that in, in Texas, they get down pretty good. And I'm sure you got a couple. So one, hopefully one day we can pick. You know, pick oh, your uh, your. Yeah, that would uh, be a good one. I do, I do have a good one that I'd be able to tell you, but you know that that's for that time. <laughs> that's for that time. All right, hey, thank you so much for letting us catch up with you post fight. Congrats again, man. Congrats on the outstanding performance, uh, the connection that you made with the fans, and and I just see these big, big uh, days ahead of you as a contender and your road to the title, man. So good luck with all that. Man, thank you so much, man. Thank y'all for having me on, man. Y'all, y'all always, y'all are always fun to like to jump on with, man. I love this. Like y'all don't ever have to like, like I'm telling you, it's a yes every single time y'all, y'all like y'all come around. Like yes, hundred percent, man. Thank, thank y'all. I love we appreciate it. I love it. it. Feelings yeah. mutual. Love we love having here. you on as well, man. All right, y'all have care. a good one. All right, we'll see you, Adrian.